If you want to see your name at the beginning of all of our videos, as well as see exclusive content here on the homestead, please feel free to join our Patreon. Memberships start off at just a dollar a month. And as always, thank you for your support. All right, it is official. I am back home. And it's time for me to start putting everything back the way I like it. I've been gone for about a week and a half and my husband has been looking after the farm. And though he did a fine job, um, I am a control freak and there are some things out of place that I need to fix. And then also we have to prepare for some babies and I have to get some butchering done. And I feel like there is a lot I have to do. Like I got home last night and I threw some quail into a lockdown because I planned that out just to the day and my barn definitely needs a good scrub down. But it is good to be home and back to our regular programming. I'm always asked about cage sanitation when it comes to solid bottom floors versus wire cages. And as you can see, we prefer wire cages in our rabbitry. Now, I have been gone for a week and a half, close to two weeks, and normally I wipe down, clean our cages, and toss our drip pans once a week. But I figure this will give you a good idea of how dirty a cage can get in a week when it comes to wire. So this is our first row. We have some very full catch pans, but the wire itself just a bit dusty and we aren't dealing with too much on the cage bottom floors when it comes to fecal matter or that kind of thing. I do have some very ugly water bottles though that need scrub scrubbed. I think this is the worst cage we have just because we have some molting rabbits in this corner. So we have some fur that's catching. And maybe on some of our buck cages, we have some hard scale that's going to need scrubbed off. But this is one of the reasons I absolutely love wire cages. In an emergency where you need to leave somebody watching your farm and you can't take care of your animals for, you know, a week or so because, you know, you have to go home for a funeral, wire bottom cages give you an opportunity to be able to leave less for your farm sitter to take care of and the rabbits aren't going to have any negative side effects of this happening. Whereas with a solid bottom cage, you could have some serious adverse effects to your rabbit's feet. You can get urine scalding, you can get fly strike, and it's just overall harder for a sitter to watch over a large amount of rabbits. Also, if anyone has been missing Mr. Jalapeno, there he is, just snuggled in with the rest of the babies. He is the center penguin. This depends on your breed. For my mini Rex, which adults are normally three to three and a half pounds, I will keep them in a 24 by 24 inch cage until the kits are two to four weeks or whenever they're exiting the nesting box, depending on the time of year. So it's less stressful on the does just to keep them in their singleton cages until I am ready to move them to a larger cage. Normally that cage size is a 32 by 32 or a 36 by 36 once those babies have exited the litter box. This kind of gives you an idea of how much cage space they have with that nesting box in the cage. Still plenty of room to move around. Most of the times the moms after they have their babies will just hang out on top of this nesting box. For my larger breeds, such as my Silver Fox, my Rex, my Californians, my Champagne de Argents, they are automatically moved into a larger cage when they get their nest box. And these cages are 36 by 36 inches. Here is Wando with her nest box, plenty of room on the side with that, compared to a Rex in a different style nest box. And this is kind of how much room they have in a 36 by 36 cage with set next box. This is the dough I am very hopeful to have kits here in the next couple of days because I really want babies out of her. I technically raise small to medium sized breeds. So most of my rabbits are around 10 pounds or smaller. So when it comes to large and giant breeds, I really don't have experience raising those and kind of deciding what size works best for them. 
this definitely depends on breed and grow out rate but i can tell you when it comes to our rexes and silver foxes our litters will normally go through a 50 pound bag of feed in two months so if you have a really good grow out rate let's say five pounds by eight weeks and you average of 10 rabbits to butcher per litter in theory for 20 dollars to 25 dollars you can butcher out 50 pounds of meat now this could be very different for other breeds rabbits that take shorter or longer but normally how i adjust it is 150 pound bag of food per two months per litter so if you're looking at taking four months to grow out your rabbits at that rate it is 50 dollars to take four months for let's say 50 pounds of butchered meat for your rabbits if we're once again going with five pounds of butcher rate with a litter size of 10. If you have rabbits that you are breeding for show, I highly suggest that you start working with them as soon as possible when it comes to posing and handling. Work with them on setting them up in the proper pose, flip them over, work on nails, everything you would expect a judge to do to your rabbit on show day, prep those babies for that. And then also, when we're looking at diet, of course, all you really need is a complete pellet. But if you want to take it to that next level for show animals when it comes to their coat and growing them out and kind of giving them a little bit of an umph when it comes to their condition, I highly suggest black oil sunflower seeds and rolled oats on top of their pellets. Yes, you can eat rabbit meat when you find that the animal has EC. You just need to cook it appropriately. It's kind of the same idea that some pigs have tapeworms, and as long as you're not eating raw pork, you'll be fine. And it's good to keep in mind that, and it's important to keep in mind when you are looking at EC, depending on the source, there is the claim that anywhere from 50 to 80% of domesticated rabbits have EC. It's just the question of whether they are symptomatic or not. Because with a lot of things, because in a lot of rabbits, we'll see things like EC and it's asymptomatic because the rabbit has a good enough immune system. Where they don't have a good enough immune system is where you start seeing things like head tilt and other neurological side effects and eventually leading to death. In the pans themselves, normally no. And that's because normally on a good rotation, we don't really have a smell in the barn. Now, if I know I'm going to be away for a while and that the pans are going to kind of fill up like I did last week, then yes, I do. And then also when it comes to the flooring on the barn, I also put down a bedding just to ensure that if there is any spraying or anything like that, it helps keep the ammonia and the smell down as well. So the first thing I'll put down is barn lime. And this just helps in really damp areas to kind of dry them up so it's not having that dank dampness that could breed bacteria. And then on top of that, I'll put a pelletized bedding down to kind of help with the moisture as well. So when it's in the pans, it'll get switched out in a week. And then if it's on the floor, I'll change it out monthly unless it's a really bad area. Such as the corner where my bucks are, they like to spray in that corner, which I will clean weekly. But the drier and cleaner you keep your barn, the less you have to worry about things like pneumonia and fly strike. Answering this question has always been difficult for me because I don't necessarily have the right words to articulate it. And when I say no, I don't feel sad. A lot of times I'm met with the comment of being heartless or sadistic or sociopathic or any of those terms. Butcher day isn't something I enjoy. I don't necessarily like butchering. It's one of those days I have to plan out for and it's a bit heavy. But I'm also not necessarily sad either. The emotional quality of sad isn't what I think of when it comes to processing these rabbits. The closest I can kind of explain it is a solemn thankfulness. 
I'm grateful that I have the capabilities of feeding my family, that I can butcher these animals out and have sustenance for myself, my dogs, my kids, my husband. But because I know what the purpose of this animal is from day one, there's not like a sad mourning period. It just is. And it's completely different from when you lose a rabbit. If a rabbit dies of some kind of sickness or disease or injury, it's sudden. I don't have time to plan for that and understand that that happened right then and there and I have to process through it. When it comes to something I have planned and I have prepped for, there's an understanding and a knowledge that it's going to happen. I don't know if that makes much sense, but again, it's not really a sadness, but a solemn thankfulness and understanding. This is the setup that I use to show off my rabbits when it comes to posing them or working on videos. What I do is I have this towel that I will switch out regularly to kind of give them a nice good grip on the wooden top here. Um, I can also use carpet squares. Uh, both work really well. And then normally I will take my bucket like this and I will set my phone against it. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's facing me and I am taking videos and I can move the bucket back further to get a better view or closer to get a closer view. And I don't necessarily have to have my hand like it is now. I just forgot to press the button appropriately. But this is simple, it's cheap, and I can kind of manipulate it to where if I want, I can put a background up and I can put something else behind it so that it looks like more professional, depending on what I am doing with those pictures and how I'm posing them. This is Zeus, our four-month-old silver fox. As many of you know, I lost my blue doe earlier in the year. And when the opportunity arose to get another blue rabbit, this time in the form of a buck, I jumped on it. At four months old, Zeus weighs a whopping seven pounds and is quite the sweet chunky boy. And though he does need to fill out in some areas, he has some pretty good body type. Beyond his body type though, the reason that we brought him in was his fur quality. He's from the same breeder where we got Nina. And between the two of them, we're hoping to improve the fur overall in our silver fox lines. The reason we named Zeus Zeus was we were hoping like his namesake that he would just have a crap ton of kids. Unlike his namesake though, he is a complete sweetheart and not a dick. So far, I am super happy with this chunky boy, and I'm hoping within the next two to three months, we can start introducing him to some does. Eight weeks snuck up on me fast for this litter. And since we had our end of summer break slash our RHVD2 scare, this is my youngest litter to date as well, which it's hard to think that I only have one litter right now in the barn. That will hopefully change by the end of the week. But my Rex litter, we separated out. The boys are all in this cage and the mom is with the does. And this is looking to be a butcher litter. I was just looking at getting some meat into the freezer for the dogs. But all of my boys in this litter are so chunky. Compared to my two does from this litter who are just petite little things. But I will leave the does with mom to kind of fill in a little more. Plus, she needs a break from breeding. And I need to honestly decide if I want to continue breeding that doe or replace her. And even though this is looking to be a butcher litter, I need to sit down and evaluate how these kits look, what their grow out is like, and kind of plan for the next generation to set up goals of what I want to improve in this line. Because this is my chinchilla line, which is completely different from my otter line. So I kind of want to sit down and decide what I need to improve on in this line to crossbreed it over to my otter line. Because that line in general is better compared to the chinchillas and I want better chinchilla lines. The only buck I would be interested in keeping is that little chin buck if he ends up being bigger than Alpha and Lemon. At least from like a weight perspective, but I can completely change my mind once I sit him down and actually look at his type. But when it comes to this litter, I'm not interested in the does and the bucks are a bit underwhelming as well.